Welcome to the No Name Brand Podcast. My name is Sashka Hanarapal, actress, singer, dancer, turned brand marketing sales and advertising strategist who brands your soul. And each week I bring you an inspiring person or message to help you discover your undergod. Turn up your leadership notches, challenge the status quo, because you're fast and furious with a powerful message to share with the world. Thank you for taking time out with me today. And without further ado, let's get our creative and wisdom juices for low wall. And we're back, folks. And today I have another treat for you. Our next guest is about a kid who wanted to invent things. When he was eight, he made a teeter-totter. When he was 11, a treehouse. And during the course of his youth, way too many giant bike ramps, which caused a lot of bruises and scrapes. I can vouch for that when I did my BMX biking. What he saw and felt in his mind and heart, he set out to invent, experiment and test. And that he's still doing today with more fervor and passion than he had as a kid because Now he has heaps of possibilities, tools and technology at his hands. And while investing and inventing, he's also very focused on enjoying life along the way. Please help me in welcoming our next guest. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Josh Hainem. Hello, Josh. Hello. That was quite the intro. That was awesome. Pretty much (laughs) describes everything better than I could have myself. So that was nice. Awesome. Awesome. Cool, man. I do my research, you know, I have to do my research so we keep it real. So it's not always just business. Like, you know, I need to go to the soul of a person. Exactly. You're pulling stuff up. I'm like, how does she even know that? (laughs) (laughs) Ask my questions. She's in my mind. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. So to let our listeners know, Josh is a well-known face online, especially with brands, over 40,000 brands to be exact, such as the American Red Cross, Forbes, Lush Cosmetics, Jeep. He's a contributor on Entrepreneur, Buffer App, HubSpot. Jeez, the list just goes on. And his thing is quizzes. Yep, an ingenious tool that helps marketers not only have freaking fun with their marketing, but also engage with their audiences without actually being there. So let's dive right in and get to know Josh a little more, shall we? Let's do this. So first thing I want to know is, where are you in the world today? And are you visiting there or always live there? So I am in Oakland, California, which is just across the bay from San Francisco. I live here for the last two years. Good question, though, on whether I live there because I just got back from vacation in Vietnam. I was there for just over two weeks. and I landed last Monday and I'm still jet lagged somehow. <laughs> I'm getting older So jet lag lasts a really long time now. It's a new thing for me. Yeah, this is where I live now. I grew up a couple hours east of here and then moved to Los Angeles to go to college. And then I moved here after that. So that's kind of where I've been at. No, that's pretty cool. How was Vietnam? Vietnam was awesome. Yeah. People are incredible there. They're genuine, kind, friendly, which is shocking because (laughs) American, what we did there was not cool. And they hold no resentment and it's an awesome place. There's so much happening. Like there's so much industriousness there that we just have lost in more kind of developed nations that I just love being a part of and got to rent motorbikes and ride around. So that was really fun too. And just switch off for a while, really vacate. Exactly. Yeah. It's like 15 hours time difference and also a different day. So (laughs) you can't really work even if you want to. That's so cool. Where would you like to live in the world? The next place that I think I want to live, well, San Francisco, because I'm about to move there myself. And then I would like to live in Berlin at some point. I've been there a few times and I really, really enjoy it. I think there's just a lot of energy there, a lot of just honesty because of kind of their history and what's happened there. And people just don't really hide anything, which I love. So I would like to live there at some point. That's pretty interesting, the viewpoint. I love Berlin. I can say that now from this time and prior, it was like something different, but Berlin has got such a vibe, such an energy and it's eclectic. And it's really interesting that you say how the people are, that energy that you get from them. Cause I'm like, oh, that's pretty interesting for German speaking country that you have that impression. I'm like, oh, interesting. Cool. Yeah. It was surprising to me. I didn't know what to expect exactly, but 
it was really, really cool. And there's such a mix of people there. There's young, there's old, and it all just kind of works really well together. So I like that about the city. So true. So share with us, Josh, why quizzes as your invention? Like what's the psychology behind quizzes and were you aware of the psychology when you created your business, your startup, but it's not a startup anymore. Try Interact. Share with us why, why, how, why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I like to say it happened accidentally on purpose because it. it was totally an accident that we do quizzes. I never intended to do quizzes. I didn't even know it was a thing until we stumbled upon it. But the way that it was on purpose was that I've always been the type to invent things. I mean, you described it really well in the intro. Like eight years old, they're building a teeter-totter out of old planks and tires. Like who does that? It's just ridiculous. Uh, One that you did miss was I built an entire network of tunnels in my backyard as well. And just straight up like crazy tunnels. And we, our backyard is like a quarter acre. So it's not a small area. It was absolutely nuts. So I've always been one to build things. And the way that we actually stumbled upon quizzes was myself and Matt, who's my co-founder in this company, were doing web design work. So we were building websites for people. We'd also do marketing for them, that kind of stuff. And one of our clients requested a quiz as an opt-in offer on his website. And it worked tremendously better than anything else we had ever done. We'd build these websites and pour everything we had into them. And they didn't convert that well, like maybe 1%. And then the quiz we put up converted at 75%. And we just thought it was ridiculous, but at the same time, it worked so well. And so we figured, why not build something that other people can use to get those same results? And nothing existed on the market. This was over five years ago. So this was before quizzes really came onto the mainstream. So we had an opportunity to invent something, which immediately got me juiced because I love doing that. I love being the one that has to figure it out. You have to go in and and solve the problem, put together the puzzle. And we've been doing it since then. That is so cool. So this was in about 2012 that you started this. Yeah, 2012. And then we had our first version up by the middle of 2013. Wow, that's pretty fast. That's really cool. How did you invent the software? Were you coding it and doing like from scratch? I mean, you were doing websites, but were you doing websites as in hardcore developer CSS code or was it a whole new area? It was in, yeah, it was entirely new. We had no idea what we were doing. So we, <laughs> we knew jobs. how to, yeah, we knew how to build a website. We didn't know how to build a website where other people could build stuff. We had no concept of how that even works. So the first version of our site was built in PHP which is the most basic version of programming. It doesn't scale. Like you can't have a lot of people using a website that is built on PHP. And we didn't even know how to do that. Like Matt was literally on vacation in Hawaii, teaching himself how to code in PHP during our sophomore year of college. And he came back from that and built the first version of our site in PHP. That site proceeded to break every three days for the first six months that it was up and we had to redo it entirely. But we literally had no idea how to even build the thing and had to teach ourselves and then build it and then it broke. And then we had to teach ourselves a new language and build that until that broke, teach ourselves. So it became a very common thing to have to learn how to do the thing and then do the thing. So now whilst all of this was happening, so you're trying to put everything together. So between 2012, 2013, you get everything online, you're failing, you're succeeding, you're failing, succeeding. And there's heaps of customers flocking to your website, right? They're all buying it. Yeah. So we had some crazy adoption. I mean, we had some crazy adoption, but also not. So we struggled for a long time to get our initial customers. It took over a year before anybody even tried it on their own. I sent thousands of emails, nobody responded. And then I switched over to doing content marketing. So I started educating people about this new thing we had discovered. I was quite literally saying, this is how it works in this industry. This is how it works in this industry. And I was making this stuff up at the time because there was nothing (laughs) to go off of. We had just made it. And then we were telling people how to do it. So they started to listen though. And that's when we began getting customers. We got Forbes, we got the American Red Cross, who had read these articles I wrote, came and signed up. One of the craziest stories was Matt and I were sitting in our college library because that's where we would work. We had to find a quiet place to to actually work. And I look up at him and I'm like, dude, 
Forbes just signed up and is building a quiz on our platform. And he's like, oh, shoot, I better make it work. <laughs> he, like, he would say that all the time at the beginning. It was super funny. I'd tell him, hey, we got Rachel Ray. And he's like, oh, shoot, better make sure the website works today. <laughs> so at that point, we did have people starting to flock on and the, and the site was crashing a lot and all those types of things. But it did take more than a year before we got anybody to even try it, even, the, even on a free level. So it was quite the struggle at the beginning. Do you think or do you feel that the biggest hindrance to, I stumbled on your website probably about two years ago, must have been about two years ago that I stumbled on your website. It was exactly that I was looking for something to build a quiz. And the only really thing available, I think was Playbuzz or something or BuzzFeed. Mm -hmm. No, Playbuzz or something certified. And mm -hmm. there was something by Thrive Themes but mm -hmm. they had it under a different name and it was yours as well. And for me, my biggest hindrance, and I'm not stupid or anything. I just like, how am I going to put a quiz together? I don't even know what to ask. I don't know what the end result. I don't, what should the question, what should the answers be? And then I saw that you also offer then the service that you, you know, you offer your customers that you'd actually write the quizzes for them, which I found brilliant. And mm -hmm. I found on Copy Blogger, which I'll put in the podcast show notes as well, where you linked up how to create your quiz guide which was really, really interesting because I went through it and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. But that was for me the biggest hindrance. So how do you now, because it's probably still a thing in creating a quiz, a really good quiz, because you get all the things and then you get all that spam mail that always comes when you create a quiz. So mm -hmm. how are you helped through content marketing still in helping people create their quizzes or how do you help me unblock that block? Yeah, exactly. And it's still the biggest block because even though we do have a lot more people signing up now than we ever have, it's still the very first time they've ever made a quiz. Mm -hmm. And so the way that I think about it is if somebody discovers a new tactic, it's the most ridiculous thing in the world to then ask them to do that tactic and create something for it. How are they supposed to know? Mm -hmm. So what we have started to do is we aggregate all the data from our quizzes. And it's not specific, like we're not taking anybody's data in particular, but as a whole, we have 45, 50,000 quizzes oh. that have been taken hundreds of millions of times at this point. And so we know what works, what kind of wording works, what titles work, what images work, what call to action works, all of that stuff. Cool. And then what we do is we create templates. So we have pre-made quizzes in every industry, we've got about 60 industries, we've got about 250 of these pre-made quizzes, and you can just copy that quiz into your account. It's already done according to all those best practices that are found in those articles on Copy Blogger, and I wrote those for hundreds of sites, but <laughs> they are all built into these pre-made quizzes. And then you can customize pre-made quiz with your own wording, your own colors, put your own spin on it but you bypass entirely the step of coming up with an idea, writing questions, writing results. That's all done. You can just modify it a little bit and it's changed everything. The time that it takes people to set up on our platform has gone from weeks down to hours wow. because you get rid of all those in-between steps. And we're still working on it. There's a lot we still need to work on in terms of making that an easier process, but it's changed dramatically from a few years ago when we were asking people to do it themselves. Now that's completely done for you. I think it's awesome because I'm all about branding and marketing. So I created Soul Brand Marketing. So how did you come up with a name? How was your branding process? Was it fun? Was it a pain in the butt? How did you find that? Yes. That's a fun story. It was basically myself and Matt and we had another friend that was helping at the time, Ethan, and we were working out of this room at UCLA and I came in one day because we were still trying to figure out how to build the website. We didn't <laughs> have that part figured out yet. But I was like, all right, guys, I got two words, interact and engage. Which one do you like better? And they're like, eh, engage sounds weird. So we'll do interact. <laughs> and that's why it's called interact. That's so cool. And was it because of the domain that you had to add try into F? Yeah. So then you go and you try to find mm -hmm. interact.co or whatever. The closest we could find was tryinteract.com. So that's what we landed on. And it kind of makes sense because everybody that is trying our product is trying it for the first time. So now it's like, oh, why don't you try Interact? It's a new thing. So it plays well. Yeah, it is pretty cool. It's like try and interact, but I am interacting with you. No, no, no. Try interact. But am I not <laughs> communicating with you? What? <laughs> yeah. Something that you said before that was really interesting is you said you sent like thousands of emails in the beginning. 
what did you put in those emails that didn't work there that worked in content marketing? Was there not similar information or was it just extensive? Yeah, I think the thing with the emails, I'm still a bit baffled by that because I was doing what I was supposed to do and it just didn't work. And I still will meet with people who are like, oh, why don't you try this? And I'm like, well, let me tell you about how much I tried that. And it's a very strange thing because those emails were an offer to not only get free access to our platform, but also have me create the content for you. And we did not get any responses to those. And I think the issue was that because they'd never even heard of the strategy, it's not like you're going to see this, become convinced it's a good strategy, and then also decide you're going to take some time to talk with this random person to build it out. So the difference between that and the content is that the content lays everything out very specifically in terms of how it works. And then you can decide whether it's something you want to do or not, as opposed to the email where it's kind of like, we're telling you you should do this thing, and then you have a choice of of whether to spend some time on it or not. The content just really, really shows how it works and gives examples and that kind of stuff. So that's a very different approach. Mm. I also think whilst you're speaking now, is that if it were me, had you contacted me then, for me, it was like, I just know the time investment that I'd have to give. So even if you're writing it for me, I still have to give you my vision, my mission, my branding, my marketing strategy, all this information, my target audience, and give all this content. So there's so much time investing for you to go and create something. So you needed that blow off so that you could create the content marketing so that you get content. So people kind of going, but I need this, this, and this, so you can create the templates. Had you come with templates, it probably would have been different because it's like, oh, I can just plug and play. It saves me time. Yeah, exactly. And even with the templates, we have to be really in touch with people because we have to know how it actually applies to their business. So all those things you're talking about, vision and what you wanted to say and all that kind of stuff, we need to be very aware of that. So we do get to use our data, which is a huge difference maker. We also have a lot of really, really long calls with people. We continue at this point to have calls with a ton of people. And Jane, who runs our head of our operations now, she does somewhere between like seven and 15 calls a day that are like <laughs> half an hour to an hour long, just constantly talking with people. Because when you try to invent something, you've got to understand at a really deep level what's going on with the clients. Mm -hmm. And it just requires just a ton of just interpersonal conversation where you're understanding what's going on behind the scenes rather than just the surfacey stuff. How's your business grown from then between yourself and Matt? How's it grown then where you kind of like, not a one man show, but two man show where the business is growing with staff. What is now your area of luxury and that you have your team members doing? Yeah. At this point, it's amazing because the team members handle all of the day-to-day -day operations and everything that's happening with our company. You know, like I said, I left for two weeks, I completely disconnected and I had zero emails when I got back, which cool. is incredible. And we, wow. we've been really fortunate to bring on good people. So we've got Jane who runs all of our operations, which is the entire customer life cycle. Jess, who runs our partner marketing program, which is how we do marketing. And then Olivia that works with Jess. And then there is also Jillian who works with Jane on the operation stuff. And then Matt and Connor are engineers and they run the entire product side of things. And then I'm kind of left to do PR stuff. So that's where I become the quiz guy. You know, my claim to fame is I've seen more quizzes than anybody on earth right now, which is unequivocally true. I've seen way too many. That's what I do is I go out and spread the word, build that interest in what we're doing. And then the team is there to handle all of that interest and really turn it into loyal customers. Cool. What are you good at and what aren't you good at? And how do you strengthen the weaknesses? Yeah. So I'm good at taking anything that I do and running way too far with it. I mean, for example, like even doing these shows, like I do seven to 10 a week for the last six months every single week. So I've done a hundred and something shows in six months, just crazy. And I even talk to you know, people that are really into PR stuff and they say it's crazy. So I'm really good at taking something and just going nuts with it. I did the same thing when I was doing guest posting. I did 200 plus guest articles in Whoa. a year and those take a long time. You got to go back yeah. and forth with people. 
So I'm really, really good at taking an idea or something that works and just running with it. I'm bad at creating a process around it. So mm -hmm. where I tend to get stuck is I can do something, but I don't know how to convey what it is to someone else. And it's something I've really, really had to practice because it's been vital that I pass off all of our customer stuff to Jean and props to her for kind of jumping in and being able to figure out a lot of it herself because I'm not super good at explaining. So same thing with Jess when she took over marketing. As we hire more people, they're going to have to do the same type of stuff. So I'm really good at doing stuff at a high level, but really bad at explaining how it works. <laughs> it's all in your mind. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. So where do you see yourself in a few years time? What are you going to be doing and achieving in a few years time? So not trying to, but you. Yeah, I think in a few years, I'd still like to be inventing stuff. I don't know where that's going to be. It seems like it's going to be with Interact because there's just so much we can do. I would also like to be interfacing more in terms of being on stage. I've booked my first few events for that in a couple months, so I'm going to get cool. into that. I mean, I love traveling. I love meeting people. I love new adventures, so that kind of plays into all of that, you know, being able to travel around and, and give speeches and stuff like that, whether it's about marketing or productivity or whatever it is. So a lot of that and then just inventing something somewhere because that's really what I enjoy. Still software, tech, or something completely different? I don't know. I think it'll be in software or tech. My other passion is like fitness and health. So ah. I want to do something in that space eventually, uh, whether it's like some sort of healthy food or some sort of, I don't know, owning a gym would always be something that I'd like to do. So maybe something in that realm or maybe both. Who knows? That'll be pretty cool. Something like on it. Pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. man. I asked you the question before, but then I didn't get back to it. Because when I speak to you now and I see your brand online, there's my mind's just going, hey, why really cool things that you can do like for branding, for try intact. I'm like, oh my God, you can do this and this and this. Did you do the branding or did you guys just like, oh, just put it out there. We're just focusing mainly on the product. That's it. Nothing else. It's been mostly product driven, you know, product and marketing, getting the awareness out there. The branding's been somewhat of an afterthought. I mean, not entirely, obviously. It makes sense that the word interact is what you do with a quiz. You interact with the quiz. So that works out really well. And there's a lot you can kind of play with there. But in terms of our focus, it's always been product first and then marketing second. And now those are equal. So we have those equally weighted. But that's what we really, really focus on. Oh, that's cool. And has all the, how much did you say, 100 shows this week or this month? Well, within the last few months, I've, I've done 100 or more, yeah. And how's that paid off? Because you know, in marketing, there's so many different things that you can do. So you've really intensely focused on blogging or blog posts, like the content marketing online, more online than offline, because you're moving to the offline scene now with speaking and stage work, I don't know, workshops or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you're more online. How's that paid off? Like, how has it impacted Intact? Yeah. So we've been doing a lot of shows and PR stuff. We've also been really pouring into an influencer marketing program, uh, which Jess is running. And we've started both of those initiatives this year. And this year, we've grown our paying customer base 300%. In 11 months after being in business for almost four years, we grew 3x. So it's really, really working well. It's the same kind of stuff. It's education. It's talking through the details of everything. And it's just being in more places though. So I think that's why it works so well. So invention, quizzes, how the future, working with kids, virtual reality, how are things moving over there? Like, have you got in, in contact with Google X or kind of like exploring that kind of area, like how you can really go into that virtual reality type of thing? Yeah, to some extent. I mean, we've definitely talked about it and it would make sense for that to merge with some of the stuff we're doing because it's, it's like conversational. The next step in conversational stuff is to make that real. So who knows, maybe at, at some point in the next few years, we'll have virtual reality where instead of it just being a quiz, it's a person that you're talking to that's asking you questions. And as you answer them by speaking, that person is dynamically changing what they say. And that's guiding you towards a product purchase got like person that would be working at, at Nordstrom's or some outlet where you're buying clothes. But instead of it being a real person, it's a virtual person. And you can even try on the clothes. I don't know. That would be cool. So stuff like that, I think merges with kind of the way that we're going at it. So we're going at it from the data side. That's the visual side. If you put those things together, you could do some really powerful stuff. 
Yeah, really good. Like even shows, normally when you're on a show, you'd have to be on stage, like live watching it. So even if you had the crowd there and you have some competition going live and you'd have an app where you can interact and it only comes up once the question gets asked and people around the world like <laughs> probably break the internet. But anyway. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, yeah, totally stuff like that. You can pull people in, get them interested. It's amazing the power that somebody's opinion has and when they get to state their opinion and it gets to be compared against others and then they get feedback based on what they say, that draws people in like no other. So somehow there's, I mean, there's tons of stuff we can do with this, but we'll just see where it goes. Oh, that's so cool. Sure. So many questions, man. For you, I don't know about so much about Matt because he's not here. What's been the easiest and the hardest part of being an entrepreneur and why did you choose to become one and still add it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think the easiest part of it for me is the intensity of it because I love that part. I love that you get to do so much new stuff. You're constantly put in situations where you are over your head and you don't really know exactly what to do and you have to figure it out on the fly. That part I find easy. The hard part is when you have to go back and put in place processes like I mentioned or you know, deal with things that may not be so fun or the tedious parts. That kind of stuff can really drag me down, especially the logistics of it, you know, finances, all that kind of stuff really, really pulls at me because you have so many things you have to deal with already. And then all of a sudden you're doing stuff that I consider boring with all the logistics of things. And so that part I actually find really difficult. And it's something that you don't think about too much when you're an entrepreneur you don't realize you're going to have to deal with the books and interface with your lawyer and your CPA and your bookkeeper and all that stuff, which just becomes a drag. So that's what I find hardest, even though it's not difficult. It's just, it's a mental drain. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of what I find difficult. In terms of my start as an entrepreneur, I started really early. I mean, I went right from the teeter-totter to starting my own company at cool. 15. What? Because... So when I was 15, I tried to get a job doing whatever, any job, but nobody wanted to hire me. I didn't even get any interviews. So <laughs> then I invented my own job doing what I knew how to do, which was install sprinkler systems and lawns. And so that was my first company when I was 15. We went out and we pitched people on installing their lawns, acting like we were much older than we were. And we put in really low prices because we were in high school. We were 15 years old, so we didn't need to get paid that much. And it worked. So that was my first company and never had a real job since then. Who's we? That was me and my best friend, Micah, at the time that started <laughs> that. We just made flyers. It was called MJ's Lawn Service. Oh, uh, the flyers were terrible. It's still on his computer somewhere. It's so bad, uh, but oh, it works. And what that was my Mike? first company. What happened what to Mike? He's now like a full-time missionary. So he's in oh, wow. Mexico on mission. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah. Still best friends though. So. Oh, that's the way it's got to be. Soul friends, soul friends. Exactly, exactly. So we're nearing the end and I ask all my guests two questions. I don't know if you've heard them, but two of the questions and your spin on them. So these are my three values and I'd like your spin on them to fill in the gap. So creativity for you is? When you identify a real problem and then come up with a solution. And by real, I mean something that actually affects people's lives mm -hmm. and what you can do to change that. Impressive. I like that one. That's pretty cool. Wisdom for you is? Understanding how other people feel about things. Mm. And where they see, yeah. Passion for you is? When you don't have to set an alarm in the morning in order <laughs> to wake up. <laughs> wow, cool. I love that one. We're going to quote that one. That's really cool. Awesome. How do you want to change the world or challenge the world doing what you do? I think there's a lot of perceptions in business that you kind of have to be a ruthless person in order to have success. And I would like to change that by showing that you can still show kindness and you can still be a genuine, authentic person and also at the same time, see good success. Love it. Well, I'm going to be a try and act customer. I absolutely love this conversation. Thank you so much for being here with us and sharing just a little bit about you. That was really important because I was telling uh, Josh just before we started the interview, or was it during? I can't remember now. Searching the internet about him. And there's so much about the quizzes, but not much about him. So it was really nice to get to know you today. Thank you for taking the time. Yeah, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Cool, man. And we'll see you again soon. 
we look forward to it. Perfect. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Dang, that was just super califragilistic expialidocious. I enjoyed having you on board and please do me and you a favor. Head on over to iTunes, SoundCloud or Stitcher. Click subscribe and a super bonus. Leave your review and you stand a chance of being announced and advertised on the show. I'm always striving to ensure that your brand is uplifted and empowered. Remember, done is better than perfect. So be sure to subscribe, leave a review, and send in your feedback too. You're the absolute best. Keep rocking.